chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Let's start reading in verse 44. And it says, uh, And he spake unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Uh, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. And, he and said unto them, this is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. I want you to notice a few things that Jesus mentioned in here. You know, he's talking about, this is after, of course, after his resurrection. And he says, you know, all these things that happened to me, these were things that Moses and the prophets wrote about concerning me. That Old Testament, it was all about Jesus Christ. And Jesus is telling the disciples that, you know, those words, that word of God, that Old Testament, it was written about me. And then he tells them, you are witnesses of these things. You saw this, okay? You all are, you are eyewitnesses. You saw this. And we see here, he tells them, you know, you're going to be endued with power from on high. He wanted them to tarry in Jerusalem. And we see later on in the book of Acts, how the Holy Spirit comes on them. And they were, they were, they were witnesses. God filled them with the Holy Ghost. And thousands of people started getting saved. And they ended up going all over the world, just preaching the gospel everywhere. And that was their job because they were, they were witnesses. Okay. Now listen, when we think, and what I want to talk about today, the title of my message this morning is, can I get a witness? All right. Have you ever heard a preacher preaching before? And maybe he says something that was really good, but everybody gets real quiet. And he's just like, can I get a witness? You know? And you know what? He's wanting somebody to say, amen. Like, Hey, I'm not the only one that thinks this here. All right. You know, some of the things that we preach, they're not real popular in the world today. And so, you know, it, it does kind of help sometimes whenever there's people in the audience responding like, yeah, he's right. Yeah, I agree with this. And you know what? You're, you're kind of being a witness. You're confirming the things I said. And, and that's not what I'm talking about today. This isn't a message about getting amens, all right? But, you know, God has given us his word, okay? We have the word of God. Jesus Christ, he made a way of salvation. He paid for our sins on the cross. He did it all when he paid for our sins on the cross. He always keeps his word. He will save whosoever will. He has the power to save. He will save. But you know what? There's one thing that he needs, and that is a witness. Look at what it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. We all know, we all know this, uh, this verse here, but the next ones we forget about sometimes. But it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's pretty amazing right there. That can happen because Jesus Christ paid for our sins. He has the power to save, but look what, let's keep reading. It says, and how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Okay. okay. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them, which preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. The Bible says they can't believe on him in whom they have not heard. And the Bible says they can't hear without a preacher. That means somebody has to go and they have to tell somebody. People, they're not just going to figure this out on their own. Somebody has got to preach the word. And listen, ladies, that can be you too, all right? Just because the Bible teaches against women pastors, you know what? There's nothing against women preachers, all right? And then women, they are, they're supposed to preach the gospel. You can go out and you can be a witness. You can tell other people about Jesus. And we're going to see, this does this apply? This is men and women here, okay? You are a witness. If you're saved today, whether you go witnessing or not, you are a witness, Okay, you have experienced salvation. You know where salvation comes from. You know the truth. Therefore, you are a witness. You've experienced this. A true witness, true witnesses are of the utmost importance right now because we live in a world that's filled with false witnesses. There's a lot of lies out there. A lot of lies being told. A lot of things that are just being shoved down our throats. Okay, listen, people are watching a lot more television today than they are listening to preaching, aren't they? And there's a lot of lies 
being shoved down people's throats. We wonder why all the perversion is accepted like it is. You know why? It's because they're being lied to on television all the time. You know, I, and, you know I'm just going to admit one, I guess what the world would call a disease that I've got a really bad case of. You know, I, I, I've got a real bad case of the homophobes, all right? You know, I do, I've got real problems with that. And uh, I, I've got, I'm a homophobic or whatever. I, I've got that problem. I went to the doctor to see what I could do to get that fixed. And, you know, he prescribed just, uh, you know, a healthy dose of television every day. And it'll help you get rid of it. You know, if you watch enough Glee and Disney Channel and all that stuff, you know, you'll, you'll get used to that stuff. And it'll get to where it doesn't bother you anymore. But, you know, you got to have a lot of that because, you know, I've got the Holy Spirit in me, too. And the Holy Spirit kind of makes me hate some of these things. But, you know what? There are such things as painkillers. And you know what? When we have something physically wrong with us, we can take painkillers that will mask that pain, or you know, where we won't notice that pain. And you know what? When you've got the Holy Spirit inside of you, there's going to be some things you're just going to hate. But listen, I do. I, th- I think television is a great painkiller. And it'll help you be numb to those things. And you know what? That's a problem in our world today. They're ta- getting so much of that stuff. They're being lied to so much. Even things like what I just said, it'll actually offend some people. Why would that be offensive? Healthy dose of television every day. Uh, You know, a ton of indoctrination. It will do that to you. And, you know, this is what we're up against. And you know what? Sadly, while the world is all in unison and promoting perversion and promoting all the wickedness that it does, we see God's people who know different being silent. And I sometimes wonder if God's not up in heaven saying, hey, can I get a witness? Look at all these people that are accepting all these lies. Why isn't anybody saying anything? Why is it? You know, if I got up here and I said, you know, everybody that's in Joel Osteen's church today is lost and on their way to hell. You'd be like, nah, you can't say that. You know, that that's taking it too far. You can't say something like that. Well, then listen, if, if there's saved people there, and I'd like to think there's a lot of saved people there, then how come nobody is, is saying anything when he's preaching the stuff that he's preaching? How does he get away with that? Are there no witnesses there? When people hear that, okay, shouldn't there, if there's saved people, there's people there who know the truth. If, there, if there's people there who actually read their Bibles, and I'd like to think there's some people there that read their Bibles, then why aren't those people speaking up? Why aren't they throwing people out of those services all the time? I like to think if I went to a service there, I would get thrown out. Because I'd like to think that I wouldn't put up with what's being you know, told there. And, and I, I just wonder sometimes, I'm like, you know, are there any witnesses there? Are, is there one person that won't stand up and say something? Listen to what's being said. I feel that way sometimes with the news media. When you see the stuff that's going on in politics and in the world, and it's like, how come nobody's asking this question? Why is anybody saying this? Did you hear what that what the president just got up and said? You know, that, and that, fortunately they'll call this one out a little bit, some of them. But you know, especially with our last president, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, time out. How come nobody is going to question him about what he just said right there? You know, where's the news media? You know, and you know, unfortunately, these people they're all they're just all kind of in the tank for the politicians, and it gets frustrating. Is there nobody that knows the truth? And listen, if you're saved today, we know the truth. We know the Lord. If you're saved, you know the Lord. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you. We have the Word of God, and we need witnesses. There's a lot of false witnesses out there, and they seem to be winning right now. They seem to be spreading their message a lot faster than we are. And the world is the world around us. It's going to hell and I do. I just picture God up in heaven saying, can I get a witness? These people are dying left and right. They're being deceived and nobody's saying anything. These are our family members many times. These are our co-workers. These are our neighbors that are going to hell. And God has us here on this earth. He's called us to be witnesses and we're not witnessing. We're not saying anything. We just sit there and we let these things happen. And I don't believe that's what God wants from us. And if you're saved today... You are a witness whether you like it or not. If you're saved, if you're saved, you know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Oh, I'm not real sure. Well, are you sure you're saved? 
You might want to check up. Listen, if you're saved, you know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. If you're trusting in anything else to get you to heaven, it's because you're not saved. You know that. You know Jesus is the only way to heaven. Yeah, but I don't want to offend all the Muslims and all the Buddhists. And But if you're saved, you know Jesus is the only way to heaven. If they don't accept Him, they're going to go to hell. And you're not going to say anything? Something's wrong here. You're, you're a witness. You know this for a fact. You know that salvation is by grace through faith. You know that the Bible is true. You're a witness of these things. You know that you got saved without doing any works. You know that you don't deserve your salvation. And yet you'll let your family members and your neighbors, you'll even go to some of their christenings and their you know first communions and their little hocus pocus things that they do in some of these false religions so they can help themselves get to heaven. And you'll go and you'll support that. You won't say anything and say, listen, that's not going to get you to heaven. Listen, that, that priest sprinkling your baby, that's not going to get him to heaven. Listen, people need to know these things. Somebody needs to tell them, well, I'll let somebody else tell them. It has to be somebody who knows the truth. And if you're saved today, you know the truth. You know that's not, not doing anything. And they will. They'll be talking about these things and all, you know, showing you their pictures. And, you know, isn't this wonderful? My child's on their way to heaven now. And I think the Holy Spirit, you know, is like, hey, I need a witness right now. Can I get a witness? Somebody say something. Don't let them be deceived like that. Don't let them, don't let them continue thinking that. Somebody has to warn them and it has to be someone who knows the truth. Someone who's an actual witness. And if you're saved today, you got saved by grace through faith. You got saved because you called on the name of the Lord. You realize that Jesus Christ was the only way to heaven. You know it. You know that that's true. And you should not let other people around you go the wrong direction. You've got to say something. You need to testify is what you need to do. And so you are, whether you like it or not, you're our witness. You know, but a wit- witness isn't any good unless it bears witness or testifies. You need to testify. Listen, if I see a murder, I'm a witness, aren't I? I witnessed it. I saw it. And if there's a case out there against that person, it's my responsibility, it's my duty to step forward and say, hey, I saw this person pull the trigger. I watched them do that. But you know, sometimes there's consequences for being a witness. You know, if I see a mafia, you know, murder, you know, I I don't want to have the mafia after me. Well, sorry, I'm a witness. I, I saw it. I have to say something. Okay, Uh, you know, right now I've got the pre-trib mafia. They've been coming after me lately. But you know what? I'm sorry. I've seen the truth in the scriptures. I got to say something. All right. You know, and I, I, you know, they're sending their hitmen out. I'm exaggerating a little bit. But, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make people mad at me. But when you know something's true, aren't we supposed to say something? We got to be a witness. And so I hope you would do that. Listen, if you see someone get murdered, you see a crime take place, you ought to say something. All right? I was at the gas station one time, and there was a guy, uh, he, was, he was driving by, and all of a sudden this car just pulled right out and hit the side of his car. And I saw the whole thing. I saw it was clearly the one person's fault. And you know I didn't feel like sitting around there waiting for the police and everything. And so I, I went over to him. I gave him my phone number. I'm like, hey, if... It's necessary. You need a witness. Here's my number. Thankfully, they never call me. But you know, when, when you witness something, you ought to be willing to say something. Why? Why would? Why would you? you know, why don't you just mind your own business? You know why? Because I hate lawsuits. Every, every time somebody sues somebody, the world becomes a worse place. You know, sometimes it's necessary. But listen, if it's going to happen, I want justice to be done. I want the right thing to happen. And so, if I can be a witness, if I can help in that situation, I'm willing to do it. I saw it. I was there. I wished I hadn't seen it because I didn't want to have, I, and unfortunately, uh, I never got a phone call or anything. So that was a blessing. But you know what? Uh, we need to be willing to be a witness. So, you know, what is a witness? Because a witness, it's one who gives testimony of a fact or an event. Turn over to Genesis chapter 21. This is the first time we see the word witness in the Bible. And it says, in Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them unto Abimelech and both of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, what mean these seven ewe lambs, which thou hast uh, set by themselves? 
And he said, For these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me that I have digged this well. Wherefore he called that place Beersheba, because they swear both of them. All right, How can sheep be a witness? Well, it was kind of like a token of a contract they made. Okay, We do that all the time, don't we? With signed contracts, don't we? And I don't, they didn't do a whole lot of that back then. But here he is, he's given them these lambs, these ewe lambs. I don't know, maybe they were marked. Maybe they had some kind of brand or something on them that made it clear that they were Abraham's. That way, later, if there's a dispute about the well, then Abraham could say, hey, you notice those ewe lambs that he has? Look and see what marks on those things. You know, those were mine. Why does he have those? I didn't just give them to him for nothing. We made an agreement. We had a deal. And they, those things are witnesses that, you know, I have, I have purchased this well. And so we see, we see it's important that, uh, you know, whenever there's agreements, whenever there's knowledge, whenever there's, a, or there's disputes about something, it's good to have a witness say that, hey, this actually happened. Do you all realize when you go to weddings that part of what you're doing is you are witnessing that these two were actually married? Because it's one thing that we're going to, what happens usually after marriage is all of a sudden people come together physically. They start having children. And we used to have a moral society where it was a problem if people came together physically outside of marriage and we're having children together outside of marriage. And so you would have witnesses to say, hey, these people did in fact commit to each other. They are married. And then it also would help too if later on, let's say that guy turns out to be a deadbeat and he goes and he gets his wife pregnant and all that. And all of a sudden he decides, you know what? I want a different wife. And he dumps her. You know, he's not going to be able to say, uh, those aren't, that's not my kid. That's not my wife. No, there's witnesses. Hey, we saw you guys get married. We saw you make vows. We saw you promise that you were going to remain faithful only unto her as long as you both shall live. And you know what, bub? You're responsible for that woman and you're responsible for that child. You're going to pay up. You're going to take care of her. And you're going to take care of that child. We were witnesses to those things because that's an important thing. That's a big deal. Okay, bringing a child into the world, it's a big deal. It's something where you know you need the mother and the father and you can't just have somebody not taking responsibility. And we have a world today where people aren't taking responsibility. And, you know, and that's why we have the crazy welfare system that we have today, too. There's so much confusion out there. But understand, you know, those weddings at one time, they were. It was uh, people were witnessing these things. They were there. They saw it. And we do the same thing today. We have things, and they are. They are a witness. They are a testimony that these things happened, that these deals were made, that these things took place. Acts chapter 2, verse 32, it says, This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all, we all are witnesses. Okay, The apostles, when they were preaching there at the day of Pentecost, Jesus has now ascended into heaven. Jesus is not physically on earth anymore, but Peter is making the claim that, hey, Jesus Christ, He was raised from the dead. And you know what? We're witnesses of it. We saw it. This is not just, not just me. This isn't just me. There was 120 of them there with Jesus Christ when he ascended on the Mount of Olives. There was 120 that were there on the day of Pentecost. And these people were witnesses. They knew for a fact that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. And you know what? It was their job to tell people about that because they saw it. It was in the word of God that those things would happen. But you know what? It helped having preachers having people saying we were there we saw it he is alive he ascended to heaven and he's coming back one of these days that that was that is their job that's what being a witness is and we are we are witnesses today that jesus died on the cross for our for our sins and rose again but wait a minute we weren't there when it happened look but turn over first corinthians chapter 15 yeah we weren't there we didn't physically see it we weren't physically present at the crucifixion, we weren't physically present at the resurrection. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12, it says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose not from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith also is vain, 
Yea, and we are found false witnesses because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is Christ not raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Y'all realize if Jesus Christ didn't rise from the dead, then we're still lost. Our faith, it's vain. Our faith, it's all about nothing. But listen, when we got saved, when we called the name of the Lord, we believed, we believed in Him. We believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We believe that He dwells in us and saves us and, it, or, and saved us. If you believe that, okay, you are, you're a witness of that. Because He did do that. He did come in your heart. He did wash you from all your sins. And one of these days, you will. You will rise again at His return. And we, we are witnesses of that. We've experienced that. We are supposed to tell people about that. We're supposed to tell people that Jesus saves. Pro proof of that? He saved me. I'm saved. Listen, this is what Jesus did for me, and He'll do the same thing for you. I am a witness of that. I can testify to you today that if you will call on the Lord, if you will ask forgiveness of your sins, He will come into your heart and save you. How do you know that? Because He did it for me. His Word says He'll do it. I've got His Word as one witness, and I've got my own experience as another witness. Jesus Christ will save you if you call on Him. And so we are, we're witnesses that He keeps His promises. You know, I've been reading this Bible my whole life, and you know what? He does. He keeps His promises. He answers prayers. I'm a witness of that. I can testify of time after time when Jesus Christ has come through for me, when He has answered my prayers, when He has kept His promise, where His Word has come to pass. I, I can testify to that. I've seen it firsthand. And you know what? We're also witnesses that judgment is coming. God's Word has warned us that judgment is coming. We see that God has a perfect track record of keeping His promises. And so you know what? I, I believe with all my heart that judgment is coming. So should I not testify to that? Should I not be a witness to, to that? And because I, I know these things for a fact. And you know, it's amazing how people many times, they'll say that they knew something bad was going to happen after it happened. And, it, and whenever they do that, I'm like, why didn't you say anything before that? Have you ever known somebody that did that? You know, maybe uh, some girl, she starts dating some guy and she ends up getting burned really bad. And then all her friends, I, I knew you shouldn't have dated that guy. I knew that guy was bad news. You know, I knew this. I, I knew that. And it's like, why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you tell me? Why weren't you a witness? That would have really helped if you would have told me that beforehand. And we, you know, we need to realize it's, uh, that's our job. Uh, uh, we just need to mind our own business. Well, listen, if you can help me out, if you can save me a lot of heartache and trouble, you know what? Don't mind your own business. Listen, if you care about me, let me know. If I'm having car problems or something, and I tell y'all, yeah, I'm going to be taking my car to this mechanic this week, and you know that guy is a worthless mechanic. You know he rips everybody off. You know, please tell me. All right? When I first moved out here, I was constantly doing that. I didn't know anybody in town, and I was constantly getting referrals from people. Like, hey, you know, you know who's a good mechanic? Who's good this? Who's good that? Because I didn't know anybody. And I got some good referrals. There was a few times for different things. I just took a chance and I got burned. And you know what? Now, if I hear somebody's wanting to use that person, I testify. <laughs> I'll tell them, yeah, don't go to that person. They're bad news. And, and I have, I've, I've got some people here in town. Listen, I'm not going to say anything here. I'm not going to post it online, but listen, if you ever decide to get anything done with a swimming pool or a jacuzzi or something, come see me. I'll tell you where not to go. Because I, I, got, I got ripped off big time one time here in town. And I'm still bitter about it. I want my money back. But they won't, they won't, they won't, <laughs> they won't give it. And I will testify. I, I'm a witness. And if you tell me that you're going to go use those people, that's fine. If you want to use them, that's fine. But you know what? I care about you. I don't want you to lose all your money. I'm going to say something. <laughs> and, I'll, and then after that, it's up to you. My conscience is clear. I won't be mad at you. But uh, anyway, I, I, think that, I think that's our responsibility. I, I think it's appropriate to do that. And so a witness, they're one, they give evidence or proof. Turn over to James chapter 2. James chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. 
For if there come into, unto your assembly a man having a gold ring and in goodly apparel, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit under my footstool. You know, he's, he's saying, Don't be partially said, Don't have the faith of a Lord Jesus and have respect to persons. That's sending a false message. And if you read all of James chapter 2, it's talking about if you have faith and you don't have works, you know, your faith isn't going to do anybody any good. You're going to be sending a wrong message. You're going to be deceiving people. Listen, if you've put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you're saved today. All right? Nothing can change that. But do you understand, though, if we don't have works in our life, then other people, are, we're going to be a bad witness. Other people are going to look at us and they're going to think they're no different than anybody else. And they're not going to listen to what we say. They're not going to pay attention to what we have. Listen, we're justified by faith without works to God. The Bible makes that very clear. But you all understand when it comes to being justified to man, we have to have works. If you don't have works, nobody's going to believe your witness. And I can get up here, I can preach a plan of salvation as clear as a bell right from the Bible. But if I walk out of here and I live like the devil, is anybody going to listen to me? No. Does that mean everything I said here behind the pulpit was a lie? No, it was the truth, but nobody's going to listen to me. Nobody's going to pay attention. And we see that all the time. We're preachers who preach the truth. They'll go out and they'll commit some terrible sin. And what does everybody do? Everything that preacher preached was a lie. Well, no, it wasn't. If it was from the Word of God, it was the truth. But now, he, that, that man has failed to be a good witness because he didn't back it up with his works. And you all understand that if we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, we don't, we don't have to keep sinning. We, don't, we can have victory over sin. And when we are obedient to God, when we're doing the right thing, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit... We are in a better position to be a good and effective witness. Okay, if I am, if I am just known for being a liar, if I mean, if you know, if you got, if there's somebody, I mean, they are, they are just a bona fide liar. They lie all the time. They have a track record of being a liar, and may, that person witnesses a murder. If that person who's known for being a liar gets up and testifies in court, they can tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But you know what that lawyer is going to do who's defending the murderer? They're going to go get other witnesses up to prove that that guy's a liar. And then you know what the jury's going to be like, you know, why should we listen to him? He's got a track record of lying. And now his witness, even though it was true, it didn't do any good, did it? And that's why we've got to make sure, you know, we keep our act together. Why we do the right thing. Because we're, we're wanting to give evidence. We're wanting to give proof that the Bible is true, that Jesus saves. And we do. We have the Word of God. The Word of God is true. The Word of God is without error. We have the Holy Spirit living inside us. 1 John 5, 8 says, And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. They're all telling the same story. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God, which He hath testified of His Son, he that believeth in the Son hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And the, this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. What this is saying here is that you know we have the record of God, all right? Proof of salvation or proof of what saves is right here in God's Word. And if a man comes along and says something contrary to the Word of God, well, the witness of God is greater. But y'all understand, if I want my witness to be effective, it is, it's going to be more effective when it lines up with the witness of God. My witness should agree with the Word of God. And we have a lot of people, too. They'll get up and they'll give proof of their point. They'll talk about their experiences. Well, you know, we've all got our experiences about things. But if they don't line up with the Word of God, who cares? And when you all can know that, hey, that message that Brother Tommy gave was effective is when I've backed it up with Scripture. Because my witness is, does mean something, but the witness of God is greater. And when you've got the word of, you know, and God's word, the Bible will always line up with God. And then when I'm lining up with God's word, I'm lining up with God. And we've got a strong case now, don't we? 
And when things become a problem is when we have all these conflicting messages going on. And we need to be giving proof. And we do that as a witness when we use the Word of God. And we, do, we, have, the, we have the Holy Spirit. He's, he's in us. And the Spirit, you know, it testifies of things. And it's, and it, it's always going to line up with the Word of God. You know, if we're, as believers, we have the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, this meekness, temperance. We have these things in our life. They, they display that we are believers, that we have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. These things help give proof that we are, t- that we are telling the truth and that our witness is good. If you don't have those things in you, if you have the works of the flesh in you, you can be telling the truth, but no one's going to pay attention. And so we need to understand that we are, we're trying to give proof as a witness. We want to make a strong case. We want, we want, if, if you go and you testify in court, you should, you know, you want whatever decision the jury makes to line up with what it was you were testifying. And so you do, you need to be able to give some kind of proof. You're going to have to have a consistent message and the word of God is always true, no matter what. But if we don't back up the things we're saying, if we aren't living like Christ, if we're not displaying the fruit of the spirit, if we're, if, you know, if we have sin in our lives, it's going to hurt our cause, isn't it? And so we do, we need, it's important that we live godly lives, that we act like Christians. We look like Christians. We do all these things. These will help us be a better witness. And so a uh, witness also is a person who knows or sees anything or one personally present as he was a witness or an eyewitness. First, in First Peter chapter 5, in verse 1, it says, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Peter said, you know, I'm a witness. I was there. I saw it. Peter also, he had talked about how the, on the Mount of Transfiguration, he referred to that. You know, we were eyewitnesses. We saw these things with our own eyes. These stories we're telling you, we saw them with our own eyes. But then he goes on and tells them, but you have, ye have a more sure word of prophecy. You know, he's like, I'm an eyewitness. I saw this for myself. But you know, better proof that it actually happened is the word of God says it happened. And listen, an eyewitness, it is, it, it's very effective in a case. And I, you know, the things that we've experienced, the things that we've seen, the things that we know, they're important, but the word of God, it's, it's more valuable, isn't it? But once again, though, if what we're doing doesn't line up with the Bible, then it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt the cause. We are eyewitnesses that Jesus saves. Okay. Jesus saved us. We know it. I'm saved. I know how he saved me. I know how I got saved. I'm a wit. I'm a witness of that. And you know what? Hopefully my testimony, when I, and I, I give my testimony, I often tell it when I'm out soul winning, I'll tell people how I got saved. And I hope that's effective. But I think what makes it more effective is when I take the Bible and I show, look, and this is what the Bible says you actually have to do to get saved. When I show that, it, ha- it has more of an effect. I give the Word of God, but then my own eyewitness testimony. And we are, we're eyewitness. Once again, I, I mentioned this before. We're eyewitnesses that he answers prayers, that he keeps his promises. In Psalms chapter 37, verse 25, David speaking, he says, I have been young and am now old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. What David is doing right here, he's, you know, he's basically trying to tell him, you know, God keeps his promises. He could have just said that. God's going to take care of his people. He could have just said that. But you know what he was trying to do? He was trying to back it up. He was like, you know, I'm old now. And in my whole life, I've not seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. He's saying, you know what? My witness lines up with what God says. It lines up with his promises. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. I mean, the Bible here is full of promises. God's made a lot of big claims. He's given a lot of commandments. He's given us a lot of promises. He's told us there's going to be great outcomes. There's going to be great blessings if we'll do these things. It's all there in the Bible. And we can be a help when we're out there back in, you know, back in the Bible up and telling people, yep, you know what? That's true. Let me tell you this story. Let me tell you about how God did this in my life. You know what we're doing? We're being a witness. And God, is, God has given His testimony. 
He's given His Word and He wants us to be out there backing it up. And we do. We hate it when we try to, when we try to tell a story. Maybe something happens at work. We've all been there at work where maybe there's some kind of conflict. Something happens. Maybe you get falsely accused. And you do. You tell your story. And, you, and what is it that you want? Because there's maybe somebody else is out there. They're saying something different. They're saying it was you that did it. And you're saying, no, it wasn't me. And you know what you feel sometimes? Like, you know, can I get a witness? I know this person saw it. They were there. Why won't they come forward and say something? They have that problem all the time when in the cities whenever there are these shootings and things going on. Little kids will get shot. There's people all over the place. Whoever wasn't shot, the little kid. They saw there was five guys in the car with them. They're wanting to catch this guy, but they can't do it unless somebody comes forward. Listen, we know people saw this. We know that there were witnesses. Somebody's got to come forward. And we've got people in this world today, they're on their way to hell. We've got people that are living hell on earth because their lives are, their lives are miserable because they're walking according to the course of this world. And God's up in heaven and he's already given us his word. But you know what? He needs a witness. Listen, somebody back me up. Somebody tell these people that you know for a fact that what I have said is true. God wants our help in these situations. God wants us to get involved in these things. We know he keeps his promises. David was explaining what his his experience was. And so a witness, it can be someone who adds credibility to someone else's testimony. In Matthew 5.14, it says, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it on under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What's that saying right there? That's saying, you know, if we will do good works, if we will do the right thing, then you know what? God's going to get glory for that. It will, we can, make, we can help make God look good. What's one of the biggest complaints that people have about God and Christianity today? It's his followers. And listen, we know that a lot of these people who claim to be followers of Christ aren't even saved. And, but, and what are they doing? You know, these false religions, sadly, they're running the name of Christ through the mud. These liberal churches that are out there that are afraid to preach the word of God, that are afraid to, you know, just lay out the truth, they are the ones that are running the name of Christ through the mud. And, you know, they're, they're not backing up his word. And they're, they're the ones that are making him look bad that are taking away his credibility. And listen, you know, as a pastor, I want to have a good testimony in this community. I want to have some credibility. But you know what? If people, if members of Liberty Baptist Church, if their names are constantly showing up in the police reports, that's going to end up making me look bad too, isn't it? Oh, another member from Liberty Baptist Church goes on a mass shooting. <laughs> now, have I ever encouraged anybody to do that? Absolutely not. But if that starts happening, listen, it would only take probably two of you to do something like that. And you know what? I'm going to have the FBI listening to all my sermons. I'm going to have them coming and talking to me. If just two of you did it. And I've never preached anything that would imply that someone should do something like that. But you know what? It would, it would hurt my message. Oh, yeah, he's one of those preachers that, you know, he, he said he was a homophobe. That was probably why they did it. You know, and they, that has nothing to do with it. But they'll, they'll make it about that, won't they? It, you all could completely ruin my testimony and ruin my message because, because of what you do. And so we, we can't do that. We need to be a light to the world. Our actions have got to back up our message and they need to back up His message. Our message needs to line up with His message. When we got conflicting reports going on, okay, it just it causes confusion. It makes everybody look bad. And so we have, we've all been there before when we were in a situation where we needed a witness to testify on our behalf. We, and we knew what the truth was, but that's not always enough. Sometimes we need a backup. And God's Word is always true. It will always be true. But you know what? People need a witness to back it up. They need somebody to go out there and say, hey, the Word of God's true. Hey, Jesus Christ, He's coming. Judgment's coming. 
Jesus saves. You're a sinner, but he'll save you if you'll call on him. And when we fail to be a witness, you know, we're not only failing God, we're failing everybody around us. You know why people, we, we're in the moral state that we are? People, they don't know that these things are wrong. Nobody's ever told them. Nobody's ever warned them. I mean, nobody's ever, most people don't even realize fornication is a sin. Most people in society, they know you're not supposed to cheat on your spouse. But if you're not married, anything goes. That's the attitude today. That's ridiculous, folks. That is so wrong, and people don't even know that. Why is that? Because nobody says anything. Nobody's a witness to it. We just we act like it doesn't happen. So listen, sometimes being a witness means we're going to have to do some rebuking. Sometimes the things that we are supposed to testify of, it will make us unpopular. But you understand that, listen, people aren't just out in the world today, you know, reading their Bibles every day, are they? They're not seeing these things. They don't, they don't even know they're supposed to read their Bible. They don't know that they're supposed to live moral lives. They don't know that they're supposed to follow the Ten Commandments. They don't know. So who's going to tell them? Well, God's not going to come down and do that. God has called us to be witnesses. And while this world is going crazy, while our country is going crazy, I just picture God up in heaven sometime. He knows that there's people all over this country. There's people in fundamental Baptist churches all over, people who have King James Bibles, people who have His Spirit dwelling inside of them. And I just picture Him up there sometimes thinking, can I get a witness? Can somebody say something to that person? You know, that your neighbor, God looks at him, I, and he loves that person. Man, I love those people. They're on their way to hell. Can I get a witness? There's one right next door to them. That co-worker, God loves them. He wants them to get saved. And you think, can I get a witness? I need somebody to tell them. How can they hear without a preacher? The Bible says. And we need to answer that call, and we need to get out there, and we need to be a witness. We need to say something. We're going to have to open our mouth. We need to preach. We need to make some noise. Somebody has got to do it. And I believe God wants it to be us. We are the witnesses. And so with that, let's all stand together.